All right, welcome back. So uh, as a developer, if you want to build your project with quality, you always has to learn the best practices used in that stack or in that platform. For example, uh, if you want to build an application, especially for mobile app like Android, iOS, you should always have to understand the best practices used for Android application or iOS application. Same, same, same way, if you want to learn DynamoDB and want to develop a product or project or software, which will be the best in quality, you have to learn best practices. And so in that line, let's start the learning about best practices for DynamoDB. The first point is designing for scalability. What is the meaning? Let me try to, and I mean, give you explanation for the understanding. So, one key factor here is uh, in DynamoDB how to how to select the right key so that so that uh, distribution should be uniform or equally distributed among the partitions, right? And why it is important? It is important because if you don't select the your key partition key well, I mean good logical partition key, there are chances that you will get lot many hot spot in your selection process, in your, maybe in one of the partition get very crowded and other partition have no data at all. And that is not good because in that case, uh, you cannot able to scale your, uh, scale your uh, software, right? Because uh, again, the, I mean, it is not able to scale because one uh, part, one partition becomes so hot that you cannot, uh, cannot go further. Uh, uh, in data into that partition and so your scalability has limitation to avoid this the one key reason to do it get it because wrong key so uh, so in that's in that case our requirement is to choose the right key okay so that is okay yeah so yeah now uh, another important point here is to understand that using the global secondary index it's good for some sense but it has a additional writing cost, write cost, okay? So global secondary index, GSIs, can greatly increase your read throughput, but also add overhead. Only use them with, when necessary and be mindful the additional write cost incurred due to GSI maintenance. Another important things to learn as a best practices is auto-scaling. Utilize Dynamo's, Dynamo DB's auto scaling feature to automatically adjust your table's capacity based on the specified utilization rate, ensuring you only pay for what you need. Always monitor with CloudWatch. Use Amazon CloudWatch to monitor your tables and indexes so you can make forward decisions about when to scale. Avoid large items. Storing large items can lead to increased cost and can impact performance also. So avoid large items use dynamodb support for large items only when necessary okay so these are some best practices you should understand and always always uh, consider when you are supposed to architect or build or develop something based on dynamodb i hope i am clear about the best practices another uh, best practices is efficient query as I already told earlier discussion also when I was discussing about query versus scanning. So always, always try to be query side to get the data, right, over scanning, as I told you. So the best practice says that use queries over scans. Scans are less efficient than queries because they read all items in a table. Structure your data to maximize the use of queries. Filter data, when you must use a scan, use filtering to return only the items you need reducing the amount of data transfer. Paginate result. For example, for large queries, use pagination to manage the data return. This helps in consuming less memory and processing time. Optimize read and write units. If you are using provisioned capacity, tune your read and write capacity units to match your application requirement to avoid throttling. Let me repeat again. Use queries over scans. Scans are less efficient than queries because they read all items in a table structures your data to maximize the use of queries. Filter data, when you must use a scan, use filtering to return only the items you need, reducing the amount of data transfer. Paginate result, for large queries, use pagination to manage the data return. 
optimize read and write units if you are using provision capacity tune your read and write capacity units to match your applications requirement to avoid throttling i hope now i'm clear let's move to the next sub segment okay so let's quickly cover uh, best practices under backup and recovery enable point in time recovery PITR helps you recover from accidental delete or accidental writes. With PITR, you can restore your table to any point in time within the last 35 days. Regularly backups. Take regular backups of your data using either on-demand or scheduled backups. Cross-region backups. Consider backing up critical data to another region to protect against regional failures. But mind, note here that when you copy this into the another region, it has some cost, right? Also, storage have cost, but then data transfer also have cost in this case. Test recovery process. Regularly test the recovery of your backups to ensure you can reliably restore your data if necessary. Do the versioning. Implement version control in your items to track changes and roll back if needed. So I hope uh, best practices under this backup and recovery is clear to you now. Okay, let's move to the next topic. Right. So after the completing of roughly uh, understanding on best practices, let's try to uh, discuss few additional tips here. When you use Dynamic TV, before that, you always try to understand the access pattern. I mean to say, design your data model based on your application specific access patterns, like how your application want to use their, their data, whatever you are storing in Dynamic TV, how your application is planning to read it. So according to their pattern, we have to design our, we have to model our data, right? Then it is more meaningful because uh, that will make sense for your application. So this is very important point, please note it. This often involves denormalizing data to optimize for read performance. Another tips, or you would say that a uh, good point to consider is use batch operation. When you need to read or write multiple items, use batch operation to reduce the number of round trip to, to the database. Monitor and optimize costs. Continually, Monitor your uses and cost using AWS Cost Explorer and adjust your capacity backups and indexes accordingly. Security. Ensure that IEM policy are in place to control access to your Dynamo DB resource effectively. By following these best practices, you can create highly scalable performance and cost effective environment with Dynamo DB that serves your application application's needs now and scales with its growth in the future. I hope this is clear to you now. Let's move to the next topic. Thank you. Thank you for completing this video. And I hope that you definitely have learned something which will help you in your system design interview. Hope to see you in next video with new concept and skills needed for the system design interview. By then, keep learning, keep improving, and keep sharing your knowledge.